Hey guys, it's Andrew and welcome back to my channel. Hope you all have been well. I think this is the fourth video in a row. I've worn this outfit just with a different color overshirt. <laughs> this is it. This is my outfit, my one outfit. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What color am I gonna buy next? Ooh. <laughs> Anyways, you've seen the title. Today I will be trying to make the viral, infamous TikTok, salmon rice, Emily Mariko thing. <laughs> oh, but vegan, obviously. So I'm kind of assuming most of you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, congratulations. You seem to have a healthy relationship with the internet. Good for you. <laughs> but if you don't know, here, let's let's watch one of the TikToks together. Bitches are eating this up. Okay, she's grabbing her stuff. She's got the salmon leftover. Puts it on a plate, leftover rice. She takes an ice cube, covers it with parchment. Places it in the microwave. Remove the ice cube. <laughs> and then sriracha mayo. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't need to narrate it. You see it. <laughs> and then she eats it with the seaweed. And she's very happy. <laughs> And for some reason, people are losing their minds over this. And just losing their minds about Emily Mariko in general. <laughs> I don't know much about her. I will say I watched one of her like grocery prep TikToks. <laughs> and then later that week, I cut up some carrots and stuck them in water like she did. So I am not immune to the aspirational effect of Miss Mariko. So today I thought I would try the salmon rice thing. I'm gonna be following recipes from Okonomi Kitchen, this blogger creator I've been following on Instagram. And you know, I'll put links in the description if you, if this it turns out good and you want to make it too. Obviously, I'm not going to use salmon for this. I honestly don't think I've ever had salmon, so <laughs> I don't really know like what taste I'm going for here, but I'm just going to trust the recipe I found and we'll see if it's good. There's this bowl I used to get at this restaurant called Zinc that was like a rice bowl with sriracha mayo. Oh, loved it. Loved it. So I'm kind of thinking this will give like similar vibes. Oh, but the, so the mayo is different. She uses Japanese mayo or QP mayo, I think is how you pronounce that brand. Japanese mayo is different to normal mayo in that it is sweeter, tangier, and has umami in it thanks to the added MSG. It also has like a more eggy taste and is more yellow because they only use the yolks instead of the whole egg. And apparently you can find vegan Japanese mayo in Japan, but it's hard to come across here. But Okonomi Kitchen also has a recipe for that, so I'm gonna follow it. Okay, so I got everything. We're gonna get into it, but first, thank you so much to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. You guys know I love coffee, and I've talked about Trade before. Love the little situation they got going on. But if you're unfamiliar, Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffees and then ships them straight to you from the roastery at peak freshness. It's super easy. You just take a quick quiz about how you like your coffee and then Trade curates matches just for you. You tell them what your experience level is and then also how you usually make your coffee at home. I use a Chemex. If you add anything to your coffee or just take a black like I do. What roast level you prefer and some other quick questions and then it calculates matches just for you. you choose your delivery frequency and then it'll arrive at your doorstep at peak freshness so you never have to run out of coffee again and when i say peak freshness i mean like fresher than you can get in the store the coffee is roasted and shipped to you within 24 hours of you placing your order i mean i don't know how you could get fresher coffee than that and then afterwards you can rate the matches that you receive so trade can continue to send you coffees that you love one of my favorite things about them is that they ship all their coffees in this compostable packaging and it's just so convenient i mean you don't have to drive anywhere and you're supporting small local roasters which is way better quality than you can get at the grocery store I truly have not bought my coffee anywhere else since I found trade they just make the process so great and I mean like I said it it's like fresher than anything else I can get. <laughs> and Trade guarantees that you'll love your first coffee, but if for some reason you don't, they'll ship you out a different bag for free. If this sounds like something you wanna try, well, we're hooking you up. Right now, my viewers are gonna get their first bag free when you sign up. It's super easy, you know, just take the quiz by clicking the link in my description box. And also, free shipping is included, so there you go. Level up your coffee game. Thanks again to Trade for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you all for hearing them out. You know, it helps you, it helps me. It's a win-win. Alrighty, let's get cooking. Okay. So since this like recipe is for leftover salmon and leftover rice, I actually already prepared the salmon recipe I'm following last night. So 
Let's cut to that. Now, we're traveling back in time to last night. All right, it's the night before it. Let's make this salmon. Okay, so originally I found this like salmon filet recipe that looks good and I thought I would try it and you know, mash it up the next day like Miss Mariko does. But then I found this recipe that was just made a couple weeks ago for salmon flakes and it specifically mentions the Emily Mariko salmon rice. So I feel like this will be better. This is made with dried yuba and tofu. Yuba, if you don't know, is like a a skin that forms at the top when you're making soy milk, I think. I, I'm honestly not really sure. I've never cooked with it. And then a kombu dashi broth, rice vinegar, sugar, mushroom powder, salt, beetroot powder for color, a sheet of nori for like the CBD flavor, and then she also calls for a teaspoon of flaxseed oil because she says those like omega-3s are key to getting the salmon flavor. Sure, I believe it. So I will say I could not find dried yuba sticks. I went to a Japanese grocery store, could not find them. They were at any other grocery store, but I do have fresh Yuba, and so I'm hoping that will be fine. The first step is literally just to rehydrate the Yuba, um, so I don't know. I'm assuming using fresh would be fine. We'll see. But okay, finally cut the Yuba into small bits with the scissors. I'm just gonna do like half of this. Smells interesting. <laughs> this is used a lot in recipes for like skin, like like a vegan chicken skin. Could wrap up like a, a drumstick with this. It literally looks like skin. <laughs> okay, okay, we gotta cut this up. Let's cut this up. I'm just gonna do like one of the full sheets. All right. I'm just giving it, you know, a little bit of this. <laughs> okay, that feels, Okay, all right, we got that. Okay, and then she says to use a grater to grate the tofu. Interesting, never grated tofu before. So we'll see how this works. I did have, oh, okay, one sec. I have already pressed the tofu. That was the first step. I just did that ahead of time. And then it calls for 180 to 200 grams. Let's see. All right, that is... That's 190 grams. Oh shit, the camera turned off and I did not realize and I was just talking. To the, to the camera that was off. <laughs> so I did the next step. I have grated the tofu. I am so sorry you were not here to witness it. It was weird. <laughs> okay, that's what it's looking like. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna see. <laughs> Is that what grated fish looks like? Maybe. Okay, and now we're gonna whip up a little marinade. So first we have a cup of kombu dashi broth. I have these dashi granules. And she makes a little note to mix one teaspoon of this with one cup of water for the broth. Okay, a teaspoon. All right, just getting them fully dissolved. Almost there. All right, and so we're mixing that and then a teaspoon of rice vinegar. Oops, that was a little more. Oh well, I feel like that's fine. And then a teaspoon of sugar. And then a fourth teaspoon of mushroom powder. All right, got that. Mix that up. And then a half teaspoon of salt. And then she calls for a teaspoon of beetroot powder. I couldn't find beetroot powder, but I have a can of beets. You know, it's just for color. So I feel like that should be fine. I'll just use some of the juices from the can. I'm laying down a towel because I'm not trying to stain my countertop. Oh, oh, oh shit, oh shit, the juices are leaking out. All right, I can't get the lid off. I'm using this electric can opener that Chris got. I can't get it open. Oh God, I can't get it open and the juices are spilling. Oh my God. All right, well, you know what? Okay, I have, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, uh, okay, okay, we're good. Okay, it's not staining. <sighs> okay, oh, okay, it kind of stained. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. Oh, God. so close. I got so close there. <laughs> All right, I'll do like a teaspoon or maybe two of this. All right, and then a sheet of nori. This will add to like the seafood flavor. And then a teaspoon of flaxseed oil. Okay. All right, so this is our little marinade. Smells very fishy. Okay, and now we add the shredded tofu and yuba. Okay. This is what it's looking like. Honestly, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more beet juice. Just wanna make sure it gets colored. Okay, she also says an optional step is to torch the yuba and tofu, but I don't have a torch. <laughs> um, but that gives it like a smoky flavor. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of liquid smoke. Okay, and now we let this marinate overnight. All right, cut back to normal time. Not last night. Last night segment over. All right, we got our salmon here. It's been marinating overnight. It looks. It looks nice, it looks kind of fishy, the color. Okay, so the next step is remove the nori and then drain the marinade in a bowl and press out as much liquid as you can. All right, let me pluck out this nori. 
Don't know why I ripped it into such small pieces. It's just making this harder. <laughs> okay, is there any more? All right, I think I got it all. So now we drain this. And then press out as much liquid as you can. Smells weird. <laughs> Honestly, okay, like that color, that looks pretty good. Okay. This is gross. Okay, I feel like that's enough liquid squeezed out. I'm gonna go rinse my hands. And then the next step is drizzle with one and a half tablespoons of a neutral oil. Got some sunflower oil. One. Okay, and now she says there's three options. You can either torch, pan fry, or bake. I'm just gonna pan fry. She says do it over medium heat until you get some color. All right, pan on the stove. Oh, oh guys. While I was at the Japanese market, I spontaneously bought this little gas stove to use for these cooking videos so I don't use that like loud one that I hate. But then I got home, opened it up, and the first thing it said was to not use it inside. <laughs> I think it can give you like carbon monoxide poisoning if there's not enough ventilation. I don't know. I need to do more research, so won't be using that today. It depends on the stove. All right, gonna go add this to the pan. Okay, while that's cooking, let's get making the QP mayo. I'm just gonna follow her recipe for a quick and easy QP mayo. Okay, so first a cup of vegan mayo. All right, got that in there. Okay, and then a fourth teaspoon of these kombu dashi granules. I hope these dissolve. And this, we'll see. Put <laughs> one and a half tablespoons of rice vinegar, and then two teaspoons of sugar, and then I'm gonna add just a sprinkle of MSG. All right, let's mix that up. All right, let me try it. That is really good. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna add just like a sprinkle more of the kombu dashi granules. Oh my god, y'all, <laughs> that is so good. Damn, okay. All right, now I'm just gonna funnel it into this little squirt bottle, you know, so we can do the drizzle as she does. All right, pour that in. Okay, and then she says to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the fridge. And then this is what the salmon is looking like. You know, it's lost some of its pink color, but it's picking up some nice browning. I feel like that's probably good. Okay, and then she says to remove it from heat and then drizzle it in flax oil. I think I followed the recipe wrong. Don't think I was supposed to add this last night. <laughs> the flavor's probably cooked off, so I'll add some more now. Apparently, the omega-3s will give it like some fishiness. Okay, and there we go. That's. That's what we're working with. Now, so for true Emily Mariko fashion, I think I'm gonna go put this in the fridge to like cool it down. <laughs> you know, she's using leftover rice. To follow the recipe, I have to microwave it. I think everything needs to be cold. And I'm here for the true Emily Mariko experience. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in this little container. And then I think we have everything. I'm gonna go put this in the fridge, cool it down. All right. I think that's everything I need to prepare, so I'm gonna cut, and I'll see you when it's cold. Can't wait to try this. Honestly, the salmon looks great. The mayo's delicious. All right, now I'm just gonna wait around for a little bit, so I'll cut to when it's later. <laughs> okay, it is time. We have arrived. We have some leftover rice. We've got the salmon. Okay, so just as she does it, we're gonna take our salmon that we already shredded. <laughs> All right, we got that there, and then top it with some rice, and then we get an ice cube. Let me get an ice cube. I don't have much confidence in this ice cube, if I'm being honest. I'm not really sure this is the most effective way to Moisten up leftover rice. But all right, then some parchment paper. We got that there. Now I'm gonna go microwave this just as she does. Okay, I microwaved it. All right, remove the ice cube. <laughs> Did that do anything? I don't know. Yeah, honestly, I think you can just sprinkle some water on top of the rice. I feel like that would work better than ice, but that was fun. Okay, and then she does a little bit of soy sauce. Then the Japanese mayo. And then our sriracha. All right, it's happening. Now we mix this up. All right, looks pretty good. And then in the video I showed she has avocado, but she doesn't always have avocado, I will say. And I don't have any, but I feel fine. The essentials seem to be the kimchi and the seaweed snack. Let's get some of the kimchi, put it in our little cup. All right, we got our side of kimchi, All right. our little seaweed snack. Okay, it is happening. We have arrived. Okay. So I think we take a little bit of the kimchi, put it on top, get a bite ready. Then we take a little seaweed snack, do it like that. And then we get a little bite. Oop, okay, mine ripped. All right, do I have the wrong kind of thing? <laughs> All right, it's not as pretty as her bites, but let's try it. That's pretty good. The rice is a little tough. I, that ice cube did nothing. <laughs> All right, let me try again. Let's just try and get like a cleaner bite. All right, 
How does she, how, do I have the wrong kind of thing? No, she has the same, roasted seaweed. Oh, I guess hers kind of breaks too. Okay, I feel fine. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna use my hands. I feel like this is a little cleaner. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. You know what? Let me try this salmon on its own. We never really had a reveal of this. That's good. It's like fine. I'm not gonna lie. It's not as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I don't love it. I love all these things separately. You know, love the spicy mayo. This is pretty good on its own. I think part of this might be that I don't, I'm not really loving this kimchi. Honestly, yeah, it's a lot better without the kimchi. It's pretty good. Well, there we have it. Would I make this again? Probably not. Is what I have just prepared for us really comparable to what she is making? Probably not. <laughs> but there we have it. We tried the famous TikTok salmon rice. I'd give it like a six out of 10. I'd give the mayo like an eight out of 10. Pretty good. Ice cube trick. Two out of 10. But yeah, there we have it. I guess that's all. I really don't have much else to say. <laughs> I thought this would be fun. I wanted to try it and now we're here. The salmon isn't bad though. Mind you, I don't know what salmon tastes like. Why did I make this video? Well, there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you had a good time. I'll see you guys next week with another video. Okay, bye bye.